Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm delighted to be joined by none other than Mark Toy from the Sunday Times. Uh, you may know Mark for breaking the story to the Sunday Times uh, about John Delaney. Um, basically, the story was broke and John went through extraordinary lengths to have the the story injuncted. Um, so just kind of, we've been asked many times by a lot of people who kind of don't know what's going on uh to try and tell us tell, sorry tell them what's mm -hmm. going on we've also been uh you know consistently messaged asked you know why are you kind of avoiding the situation i was ignorant to the fact of of uh of the facts i suppose you could say we we all see about the bridge and loan and so on but mm. the actual facts of everything uh i was quite ignorant on so i got in touch with mark who broke the story to try and get the facts and try and educate the people who don't know basically what's what's going on so um i'll start with kind of how you kind of came about the story and how you went about kind of i know you had to go through through the courts and everything like that so how did it kind of all come about firstly yeah it's um so john delaney and the fai and the fai's finances are you know something that's been a, a huge interest to me as a, I'm, I'm a news reporter i'm not a sports reporter but, you know, I would have followed a lot of writers like Paul Rowan on their own paper, um, Emmett Malone in the Irish Times, uh, Dan McDonald, the Indo, um, there's a few others that are really good. And, you know, they're, they're, they're just, I've always been struck by the lack of transparency in the FAI. And I've looked at John Delaney's own personal finances as well. You know, we've written a bit about that, you know, that he's, you know, he's got a, a furniture company slash property investment company. And we've, we've written a bit about that. And one thing that's been consistent throughout all of our investigations and stories is that the FAI and John Delaney refuse to answer very basic questions, you know, whether it's about John Delaney's personal finances or the FAI's finances. Um, I think on the back of that, you know, we were contacted and we got a tip off that John Delaney had made a hundred thousand euro personal payment to his employer, the Football Association of Ireland. So yeah. I mean, in, immediately we were like, Look, let's talk to John Delaney and find out if this is true and, you know, and see what he has to say about it. You know, it'd be an extraordinary thing for him to be writing a personal check to the FAI. So on March 1st, um, now just about two months ago yeah. when we were recording this, um, we went straight to the incoming uh, FAI's uh, press director, Cal Durvin, we, and then you know, he said, there's no story here basically, you know, um, this is a personal matter. We're like, how is this a personal matter when it's a check made to the Football Association of Ireland? So I rang Paddy Goodwin, who is John Delaney's personal lawyer. He said, I'm not talking about this. And I said, well, look, who, who can? He was we'll talk to the FAI. So we went to the FAI's press officer, put it all in writing. And this became very important later on. We, there was no response, basically, you know, and no explanation. And we thought this was very strange. We continued to make investigate, you know, to do our investigation. We were happy after about two weeks that the story was true. We were able to stand up that this, there was a check and there was a repayment. We were 100% satisfied that that information was correct. We didn't know at that stage what it was about. We just thought this was very curious. And the number one thing we did as well, you know, there's company law in this country and it says any related party transactions, any, any like John Delaney was a director of the FAI for 17 years. So any transaction between him and the company you would expect would be, have to be declared in the company accounts. They're audited published accounts. We checked the 2017 accounts, the year of the check, and there was nothing. So that just raised our curiosity even more and our suspicion, you know, what's this about? And then we, I wrote the story. I, I wrote, wrote a formal letter to John Delaney and had a courier around to him saying, here's what we're gonna write, you know, you have a chance to respond. We got on the Friday before St. Patrick's Day, St. Patrick's Day was on a Sunday, we got our first response saying, this is all to do with family law, uh, you can't print this. And we wrote back saying, it's nothing to do with family law. We don't know what you're talking about. This is about Football Association of Ireland and its chief executive and money going back and forward. Yeah. And so that was Saturday. Then the next day, um, I'd written the story. I was ready to go home. It was my birthday the day before. I had my hoodie on. <laughs> my wife had bought me. You know, I wasn't dressed for court. And next thing, our lawyer starts calling. And uh, it's just 4 p.m. saying, John Delaney is down in the high court or is going down to the high court. Get ready. So I'm, I'm printing off these emails, trying to get something ready, you know. So I printed off the March 1st email, which became very important. We ran down, got a taxi, got down to the forecourts. We had to rattle the gate to get the security guard to let us in and then go back down five minutes later and get to reopen it. To, to, we met our barrister for the first time. This is 6 p.m. now. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> there was a three-hour hearing where you know, I walked in the door and John Delaney's sitting there in a suit 
with his team of lawyers and I'm there in my hoodie going, geez, what have we walked into here? It's, you know, if, he's, yeah. if he injuncted us, he wanted us to put the, the uh, wanted the, ca the case or referred back to ch the following Tuesday and we'd be in the family law court. He said this is all to do with his divorce. And if we'd been sent back on Tuesday, you know, that would have been a black hole for us as far as we were concerned. The story would never get out. So thankfully, Tom Hogan, the senior counsel we recruited at the last minute on the eve of St. Patrick's Day was fantastic. And he put up a great fight saying John Delaney is trying to hide behind the family law courts. This is a matter of public interest. And the judge, Judge Anthony Barr, the high court judge, came back after 20 minutes and he read a long, lengthy judgment, 45 minutes and half nine. You know, it's dark at this stage. Yeah just before a deadline, he said, yeah, there's significant public interest in this. We legged it out the door, uh, rang in the updated copy. We'd won the case. Like the story, we had a blank section going to run or businessman in Junks of Sunday Times story with a few different yeah. scenarios played out and we got the story out there. And, and since then, all hell has broken loose, I think it'd be fair to say. Yeah. Um, kind of, you know, as, you, as you were saying there, like, I mean, every board member I think now has a step down. Is, yeah, and John Delaney stepped aside. Sport Ireland have suspended all funding. The government has suspended all capital funding. You know, we've had like in the and we've and what's been great for me as a journalist, you know, um, whistleblowers and other contacts have come forward or, or accept phone calls, and my investigation has kind of snowballed from there. Like we've had the the hundred thousand euro check, so that was that emerged that John Delaney said that was a, a short term loan. Then, you know, John Delaney's personal. Um, Salary has always been a massive, massive controversy within the football association, 360,000 yeah. euro a year. But what we were able to uh, reveal within seven days of that story was that he's also getting his rent paid for over 3,000, up to 3,000 euro a month, it was paid for directly by the Football Association of Ireland. I think that for a lot of people was the final straw. And on the night we wrote that story, John Delaney stepped aside as CEO. You know, ending a 14-year term. That was the Gibraltar term. game. The night of the Gibraltar game. So like, that was a crazy night again. Yeah, because I, I remember we actually just didn't want to cover it as well at that period of time because we just wanted to focus on the team and the football at the time, you know. So sorry to cut you off. Yeah, no, like this is extraordinary stuff. So like all in the build-up to that Gibraltar match. Like, yeah. Thought, like Saturday night after we'd gone to print, uh, just about got the story in. Um, they issued, 11 22 at night the FAI issued a press release their first press release saying that this was John Delaney was aware of, sto of uh, stories going around about this you know for 14 15 days he refused to answer any questions as soon as he lost the case he was able to explain it extraordinary behavior I thought and then every day for that full week leading up to the Gibraltar game the FAI were issuing press releases and the Sport Ireland were issuing press releases uh, so you know this is the build up to McCarthy's first match, you know, and yeah. it's just bonkers. It was totally taken away from, yeah. uh, you know, the, the team and, you know, everyone was, there was a real buzz about the team kind of, you know, mixed back. Of course, if yeah. We want to get the, 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 the two wins. Thankfully yeah. he did. Yeah. And, you know, they did their part to be fair. Um, but, but yeah, as you were saying, um, it, it was all the talk. I remember, you know, because I get the emails as well. And I just remember it was getting email, 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 and it was just all to do with, John Delaney and stuff like that and I was just hoping it was like oh maybe something to do with uh, you know Mick or, or an interview with Mick or something like that or a media day with Mick or mm -hmm. something like that. it was just constantly just getting all the stuff about John Delaney and as I was saying I was quite ignorant to the fact of what, yeah. was, that, what was actually going on um, and I kind of wanted to get the the facts as, as I was saying I know mm -hmm. you, you were saying there about um, kind of he stepped aside then as, as CEO on and the then night, became that announced on Saturday night yeah after the Gibraltar yeah and then he became vice president or executive vice president yeah. sorry yeah um, and and then I, I think I believe you were at the Oireachtas hearing yeah so um, that, that was something we, and that was we said that to the judge you know this is, is a matter of significant public interest there's an upcoming Oireachtas hearing on this you know like, this was long penciled in the Sport Ireland uh, sorry that the Oireachtas uh, Sport Committee wanted to talk to John Delaney and the FAI about corporate governance and how they were using uh, state funds you know which is about 3 million euro a year and the Sun the Irish Sun had done some good stuff revealing that you know every year for the last few years the FAI had been seeking and getting uh, advanced payments on their, their state funding yeah so um, I have to, uh, So that came. Um, Sport Ireland came in first, and they were exasperated. Like you, they could see, like the, just the, the uh, Kieran Mulvey, the chairman, and John Tracy, the chief executive, were just you know completely lost their, at their wits' end as to why the FEI couldn't explain this hundred grand loan in in, in completeness. You know, and yeah. Donald Conway, the FEI president, was uh, sending them 
really short one two line sentences uh, but not explaining what the hundred grand was about and why this is important is because under the rules of these grants and um, that are given out by sport ireland is you, one of the terms and conditions says explicitly if there's a material deterioration in your fu funds and your finances you have to let us know because that's th the reason for that is because if you're getting all this money from the state they're, they have to know whether your finances are in good stead or else there's concerns that you could be using state money for stuff you shouldn't be using it for. And so it's a very basic requirement. And after a lot of um, Prevar came in and, and delay, they, they, they just didn't answer. And then finally they admitted, yeah, look, okay, we've breached that term, term and condition. And that led Sport Ireland then suspending the funding. And that, that was right the day before the uh, John Delaney appeared. And that just ramped up the pressure again on John Delaney and the FBI. And, you could see then, like John Delaney took this legal approach when he came into the Oireachtas, and uh, you know he made a statement, basically dumping on his finance department, saying it's their fault this wasn't reported, admitting that he didn't tell the full board. He said he only told two other board members, the then president and the secretary. So the honorary treasurer Eddie Murray didn't even know about this, and um, he was asked questions, um, and he said, you know, I, this isn't good, but you know I don't feel I've been undermined in any way. Then he's asked about the bank accounts, something that we'd had on the front page, you know, during yeah. the, the the house story, the rent story, and you know, we'd said there was twenty five bank accounts, but Eddie Murray hadn't read that, maybe. But he thought there was one. He thought there was one, and they yeah. said there was twenty four. And you know, I think a lot for a lot of people who weren't following the finance finances closely, this was like you know the scales were dropping away from their eyes. They were saying, "Oh my God, this is the guy who's who's keeping an eye on John Delaney and the FBI's finance. He doesn't even know how many bank accounts they have, you know, and yeah. he's just not on top of his game." and he resigned then within a few days of that. Um, and you know, we subsequently did a story about you know, John Delaney's credit card payments, how much he was claiming over six months, 40,000 euro, and a 60,000 payment to a third party, his, John Delaney's ex-girlfriend, which he says she didn't get. So again, more very strange and very strange transactions involving the FAI, which the FAI or John Delaney have not explained yet. Yeah. Um, no. I know, uh, and I, I, you were on uh, Eamon Dunphy's podcast, mm. The Stand, and uh, you know you, he reiterated the fact that you know how important it was that he, your newspaper it were actually right behind you because so many people you know tried to to follow up on this bef previously and yeah. uh, were, were denied. So I think in in that aspect, you were, you know, I think a lot of people are, you know, really want to say fair play to you in that aspect is that you were the one that kind of. I mean, since you started this case, now they've pretty much all gone from the board. Just, they have to get a whole new board. And for how long, I don't know now. People have been calling for a new board for so long. Mm. I mean, you probably know more than me how long the board members have been there. Well, well yeah, like John Delaney was there 17 years, but there was at least uh, two other members who were there 15 years. I think half the board were there over 11 years. You know, it, it was ridiculous. You know, we, like, I spoke to uh, Neve Brennan, who's a corporate governance expert in UCD, and she said, you know, after six years, you're, you're stale, you know, and the, the, the whole raising the after off a board is to keep the executive in check, you know, and not to become captured by them, you know, and, you know, it's keep them on their toes, make sure they're doing things right, you know, that they're doing things by the book. And when you had guys there who were clearly very close to John Delaney and he was extending the age limits and the term limits, you know, to, to make sure that a guy like Eddie Murray, who's, who was 79 this year, would be 80 later this year, that he was kept on for 15 years and he clearly wasn't up to it. You know, that's my, that's my honest view, having spoken to so many people involved the FAI and having seen his performance in the Oireachtas. You know, you needed someone who's an accountant in there. This guy's a ret retired guard superintendent. And, you know, a very honest guy, a very straight guy, but, you know, I don't think you, you could possibly say he was on top of the situation in the FAI. And so a lot of people have been saying, this isn't right. After six years, people go stay off. In nine years, it's bad. But here you have people on the board 15 years. And, you know, they're going to matches with John Delaney. And, the whole Genesis report, you know, 2002, one of the key recommendations was two independent board members, you know, people who aren't involved in the FEI, who, whose club isn't reliant on John Delaney coming and, you know, giving them five grand or whatever. Yeah. You need someone <laughs> like, that's completely separate, has good business sense, good business background, who, who, who promote transparency, promote good accountancy practices. You need those people on the board. And this is why Genesis recommended it. So they can say, hang on, what's going on there? You know, are we checked? Why isn't this re uh, transaction in the management reports? So, yeah, I think a lot of people have been calling out for change, and rightly so. You can understand that. And, you know, recently we've had Brendan Menton, the former um, Secretary General of the FBI, going out and talking very strongly about 
you know, how it's time for grassroots football supporters, f- grassroots football people to come and kind of seize back control of the Football Association mm. of Ireland. I know, I know a lot of, uh, I think the Leinster Senior League and a f- few others have sent, you know, and uh, you know, even the club I own with Rosemount even sent emails back saying, you know, because the Leinster Senior League had sent out, um, basically, are you happy with the FAO? Mm-hmm. Yes or no? Two clubs, so clubs could give their feedback. Exactly, I think yeah. they got a majority, uh, basically, saying they weren't satisfied with how things were being dealt with mm-hmm. and ever since all this is kind of uh, coming out it just seems to be you know a backlog of just stuff keeps gathering on top on top on top on top and then obviously John Delaney uh, steps aside there I think was it last week he stepped aside um, it's just over two weeks ago now um, mon- uh, two and a half on yeah. Monday yeah oh, um, that's pending of investigation so, he's, so he, what, what, what exactly does that mean well the FAI haven't clarified what, what we know through Sport Ireland their understanding is that he's on gardening leave and that he's on the salary so you know pending um, there's a Mazars they're an accountancy group who are doing an, a, a full investigation we're told we're the Office of Corporate of Director of Corporate Enforcement the ODC we're quite a serious bunch the people who you know they've gone after like Anglo bankers, some of them have been successful, some of them unsuccessfully, you know, in the case of Sean Fitzpatrick, but, you know, they've got Gardaí involved, they've got accountants involved, they're investigating the FAI, so what the FAI has said is pending the investigations and into matters of concern, transactions of concern, that John Delaney yeah, is, is in this stepped aside position, which is basically gardening leave, you know, so... But and and there's no, there, but that's created a vacuum, obviously, in, in the leadership of the FA, and, and there's a real crisis for the football association at the moment. You know, we've got a, we've got an interim CEO, we've got no uh, recruitment process even for a new CEO, and we've got a board on its way out. So there is huge problem there in terms of replacing John Lane, who was you know a very capable guy in in so many ways and had such good contacts. And we have this UEFA Under 17 tournament coming up and confusion. Yeah, no one even knows if he's going to be there. Like it, it's unsure now whether he's going to be making an appearance. I know uh, people have been kind of probing whether or not. He's, I think it was Dan, Dan McDonnell. Yeah. Was asking whether or not he'd be he'd be making a, an appearance, um, as a UEFA. I think a UEFA. Yeah. So like associate. U- UEFA being quite mute on on this. You know, there's a lot of people expressing concerns in Ireland about um, you know, John Delaney's continued presence in the FAI, but like, he's also obviously a key member of UEFA now on their executive committee. He heads the committee for this you know, under-17 tournament, so we don't know if he's going to be there. Like, there's a match in Waterford, but we saw at the weekend. You know, so he should be there by right, you know, because UEFA haven't suspended him. You know? yeah. um, like we've written about some other things in the last month and a half. You know, like there was a, we learned more about a deal that the FAI and John Delaney did with THG, the Marcus Evans group, they came in for a lot of um, investigation in Brazil and Rio and, you know, the Olympic Council, and that was the end of Pat Hickey. We, we found that the FAI had a deal where they were supposed to use best endeavours to supply uh, Champions League tickets that the FAI got and, and World Cup tickets at South Africa 2010. Now, my understanding is that Delaney ensured that they didn't uh, provide those tickets, but even the fact that they would sign such a deal with THG, who were, you know, legitimately supplying um, catering in the Aviva, um, this is another thing, you know, another curiosity that's come out. And you, I know yeah. UEFA and FIFA are looking into that, but yeah, we don't know what's going to happen with John Delaney and UEFA. And clearly, that's where he saw his future. You know, he was on 160 grand a year at, in this role. And when when we broke our story on the 100 grand, he uh, put it out there that he was donating his 160 grand a year to the FAI. And like, you have to ask, like, what's happening with this money now? You know, yeah. Uh, like, obviously, John Delaney needs to be pers- to be paid for his work, but. You know, why was he donating the money to the FAI? Is that another sign that the FAI are so broke that they need that money? You know, it raises huge questions, you know, because the whole thing about the 100 grand and people are, you know, you're saying, what, what's the big deal about this? And why did he try and stop it? You know, if, if you look at what it means, it means that the FAI were so broke, so heading towards insolvency at that period, this has been raised in the Oireachtas by Pork Okeda and uh, the sport committee, that they needed their own staff member, an employee to bail them out. You know, they couldn't, yeah. They, they they had liabilities they couldn't pay unless and and this raises and no rock assets was this 100 grand meant for Dundalk FC you know from their prize money well this raises yet more questions you know what's happening to this UEFA prize money are the FAI using it for day to day spending you know is that allowed yeah. you know is, is it going into one bank account and going out to the other so this is something like Nazars and the ODC will all be investigating yeah and and you, you were you know you'd, you'd actually brought out a uh, Another article then with the credit cards and stuff like that. Um, do you want to go into detail on that? Well, yeah, I think 
you know, I'm just trying to get as much basically uh, facts out there for, for the people yeah. who don't know, basically to to let them know. So like, I, I've no, I've no complaint about John Delaney being you know an incredibly uh, good networker, and he's done well in getting Ireland you know the Euro 2020 games next year, the 2011 Europa League final, and the Euros, <coughs> and the Under 17 tournament yeah. starting later this year. Yeah, so like, obviously these are great achievements. But you know he was paid three hundred sixty grand a year, and it was a huge amount. This is FAI staff were getting ten, fifteen percent pay cuts, and you know we, we, we showed how he was getting paid. The, the FAI were covering three up to three thousand euro a month in his rent when, and this made a lot of FAI staff that we learned about it through the Sunday Times. You know, their jaws dropped, their eyes were like, "What is going on here?" Yeah. And so, one of the big things, and I've been, it's a trail I've been following for a long time, is you know what's he been doing in kind of the personal expenditure side of things so John Delaney had an FEI credit card we were able to see records for six months covering the end of 2016 and also one other huge 8,000 euro payment for Ritz Carlton in Dubai in 2015 sorry that was um, sorry no that was New York that was New York you're right yeah Um, so we we were able to show that he on the FEI credit card he built up expenditure of about 40,000 euro in six months now that's fine and allowed if the FBI are aware of that and approves but there's some there's a lot of curious um, spend spending recorded on those credit card transactions such as over six thousand euro withdrawn in cash um, through some 40 withdrawals so like the FBI still haven't explained if that's something they permit John Delaney or other staff to do like is it is it does it require to be received was any of that refunded we haven't got an answer on that there was expenditure in Hilfiger there was expenditure in Kath Kidston there was expenditure in other stores I'd never heard of, to be yeah. frank. You know, but there's no obvious link to football, you know, and that's why I think it's important to get that information out there and say, is this is this what was approved? You know, because Bernard O'Byrne, a previous ch- chief executive at the FEI, back going back, you know, to the mists of time, the early noughties, he had to leave over his his use of the FEI credit card. So I think, obviously, the same. And John Delaney was one of the people who you know wasn't happy there and asked for a review of that. So I think the same. Uh, standards should apply to John Delaney as the previous people. Yeah, and, of course. Yeah. And we've had, you know, Brendan Menton, you know, coming out and say, you know, his understanding was that such expenditure on personal, on any personal matter through an FEI credit card wouldn't have been allowed. And so he he wanted to know if rules had changed and had that been flagged with with the North, with the at an AGM or at some other committee. Yeah, and I just wanted to kind of point out because there is good people still in the FEI, not at the board level. I mean, well, I, there is some good people. I'm not saying like the board members are all bad, but they're like there is some good people there, but these are all the whole board voted to move John Delaney from chief executive. Then on the night before the Gibraltar game, apparently the meeting happened, and it was announced the night the night of the Gibraltar game. So the whole board voted after the Sunday Times had done this story about the you know the, the board learned about this hundred grand payment from the Sunday Times, not not through John Delaney. You know, only one other existing board member knew about it. So, but that same board, even though they they learned about this, what I think was quite a bizarre and curious transaction. They all voted unanimously. Let's, let's, let's create this brand new executive vice president role, you know? So that, that whole board is still there. Yeah, and as you're saying, yeah, a lot of really good people in the FA, a lot of fantastic people, and a lot of them are very concerned about their future and their, their, their pay, you know? And that's been the, the, the most concerning thing for me. You know, a lot of people have contacted me, current and former FAI, worried about their colleagues, you know? Um, and people saying, you know, they don't want to wear their FAI tracksuits out now because they're concerned people will laugh at them or make fun of them or something. So that's... That's not a good thing, and that's why I think you know these investigations need to finish it's, it's as be- soon as possible. Yeah. And especially doesn't help the fact that they're coming into a under 17s tournament. You know the, peop- the peop- people at, at ground level who are actually trying to you know make that a success, yeah. the tournament a success as well, and they kind of feel bad for them in a sense because I di- I deal with them you know through in- getting player yeah. interviews and whatever, and they've all been fantastic to me. Um, and it's just a shame that the people above them, you know, make such a mockery. And, you know, I wouldn't imagine that too many people come out and say they're proud to work for them, you know, that type of way, because of the flack and stuff they would receive. Obviously, even before any of this, because of the the, the reputation that the, that's been yeah, given like, to them now. That, that, that That's obviously very unfortunate. And, you know, there are so many like great coaches there. They're good yeah. at the communities, you know, and there's so many good staff there. And, you know, on the commercial end, they do a, a lot of good stuff. like you know, The bring, development officers. And yeah, stuff, yeah. So, um and this tournament now it's it's obviously coming at an awkward moment and there's no leadership there you know we've an interim ceo you know we haven't seen since the eructus uh, hearing and you know the finance director is only in the job two weeks so you know it's a very green leadership at an executive level and you have to wonder how much 
control the, the existing board are having, you know, and that, you know, Brendan Menton again, I don't keep using his name, but he called for, you know, an, an urgent EGM and it's surprising that there hasn't been a greater move for that to get in new heads and new leadership in there. Um, and, you know, but like Niall Quinn has made a lot of good points on um, reform of, you know, League of Ireland and reform of basically the football infrastructure. Yeah, Ireland. and with the PFAI and stuff like that. Yeah, like it's like, one of the most bizarre things I heard like in, in, in this investigation is that, you know, the PFAI are based out in Abbottstown. I know, Stephen and, and Ollie, I've uh, yeah. spoken to them and they, they, there's no relationship there. They can't even um, go into the canteen, you know, like the FAI staff been warned not to associate with them, you know, if, if senior FAI staff or John Delaney saw that, they wouldn't be happy and that's kind of a cultural fear that can't be acceptable or, you know, that kind of relationship Sh- shouldn't be like that there should be an open kind of door policy there you know where players and the the FBI executives can can talk to each other you know and that it's not daggers drawn all the time you know yeah absolutely and and it's and it is a shame because you know Stephen and Ollie and the rest of the like there's just players currently playing that are, are around the PFAI like I did the marathon with them in the cup final last year you know there's really good people there and it is a shame that they're not allowed you know maybe things have changed now um, since the, you know the downfall basically um, at the top level, but it would be nice if 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 people who are actually actively involved in the game were kind of heading what's going on in the game. If you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like Shane Ross, who, who the Minister of Sport, who has a lot of responsibility in this area, and you know, had been seen as quite close to John Delaney, you know. But in fairness, in recent weeks, he's come out and said, you know, that he he, he wants Delaney out basically, that he wants the board out ASAP. And one of his interesting ideas, although I think it was kind of top of the head stuff and he needs to kind of give us some meat on the bone, he, he was talking about, you know, getting a, a football forum together and, and he was saying, I want to have a player on the FAI board, you know, a current player, a player rep. And I think that makes a lot of sense, you know, like the players shouldn't obviously control everything, but mm. they should have well, a so voice so, there. So, so, oh, okay. Maybe yeah. John O'Shea, he's up to retire now. So. Yeah, yeah. Like, like it has been very interesting seeing, you know, how some recently retired players have been very, very, Jumped to John Delaney's defence, you know. Stephen Hunt. Stephen Hunt for one, but though he kind of backed off after a week or two, you know, when more of the stories came out. Um, like even we had Castle Island opening their new club last week or the new new grounds, you know. And Michael Healy Ray had said, you know, you're going to get the mother of all welcomes when you come down here, down here, John Delaney. And you know, there was no sign of John Delaney yeah. when that happened. So um, things are changing, but quite slowly it seems. Yeah. Yeah, but if, you know. You must be proud of yourself in in terms of the fact that you know you 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 have changed and you, the future for Irish football in a more positive way. I would say. Well, look, it's it's been it's been very satisfactory. Yeah, to get a lot of stories, it got a lot of traction, and it's snowballed, and more stories have come. And you know, it's it's been just a very fast paced investigation for me. You know, there's been yeah. a lot of a lot of travel, a lot of meetings, um, and it's been great that people have trusted me to get the stories out there because. The, like speak to some of these people there's a lot of fear about retribution in the football family like people like in the higher restaurants the FAI have wielded a lot of power and people who are on their their bad side have you know been completely put shut out like you know you see people like Paul Cook um, I don't know if you saw like he did an interview in the Sunday Times of the weekend you know where he asked a question on AGM and you know basically he was forced out of um, no, the, the FBI yeah. council after that, you know, there's so many people that have um, put their heads above the parapet and asked awkward questions, and it's resulted in them being completely extra, exercised out of the FBI and out of football structures, and that's very sad. So I, it'd be great if someone, whoever comes in, would be accepting that there is going to be dissent. You know, no two, no people are going to agree, and you know that they'll take on you know these people who have a lot of valuable in, in, insights, like people like Brian Kerr, like who's again, you know. He's yeah, I mean, even ex pros, a lot of them have come out and said like they don't understand how he's not been involved in any capacity. It's been disgraceful the way he's been treated, you know. And you know, and like people like John Giles, I know he's been a strong defender of um, of John Delaney's up till recently as well. And I think Delaney, one of his his things was you know he he, he curried favor. He he went to all the club openings. You know, he he invited people like John Delaney to his birthday party. And he kept close to them, you know, and. He brought him in with the John Giles Foundation, and I think like John Giles is a great servant to Irish football, you know. But like, of course, yeah. I think people got they got confused that the John Delaney was a nice guy and very personable, you know. But that didn't mean he was great for Irish football. Yeah, I mean, he's been he's been good to me in aspects, you know what I mean. I I, I haven't came across him being anything but nice to me. But as I say, it, it, the reason why I solely wanted to do this video is purely because I care about Irish football and the future, and I feel like. 
everybody who watches this from, from, from our audience would be different to say your audience and stuff like that course, so it's kind of yeah, put them yeah. all into one so everyone's kind of in the know and you know it, it might upset some people people that were doing this video I, you know but that's it like, can't please like, everybody I've, so. I've never had a reaction like it story wise you know um, like <laughs> like my number of Twitter followers have exploded like I think I've got like 5,000 extra <laughs> in the last month like we've had over um, like 400, 500 people subscribe to the Sunday Times only yeah. 5 euro a month but like, that, like st stuff like that it's just it, it's, it's inspiring in that if people saying look I'm buying your paper I'm paying you I'm, or I'm subscribing online because I want to support this kind of journalism that you know we'll dig deep we'll go the extra mile we'll, we'll go to the court if someone tries to block you we, we'll actually fight because you know John Delaney has sued eight different media organisations in the last 10 years or so and he's, he's, there have been a lot of payouts you know and so you know, the, I've been sued by other people, but you know, he, he's a guy you have to obviously watch yourself with. He's litig he has litigious tendencies, you know, so it's not easy getting these stories out there, and you have to have it banged to rights journalistically to get to be sure you get that into print, you know. Mm. I suppose you'd need luck as well, as you're saying with the judge as well. 100%. You know, there's um, luck that, you know, the tip off came at the right time. Like, I was just finishing the Dennis O'Brien uh, Sunday Business Post case, and, you know, I had a bit of time on my hands. You know, if that case had been ongoing, I might, I might have put this on the back burner. It's so many things. You know, we got the right judge, we got the right senior counsel. You know, if we cut out a different judge that didn't appreciate, you know, freedom of expression, freedom of the press. You know, who would have been only interested in the family law aspect and something that melted away afterwards, you know. So, and then, you know, the people have trusted me to bring out other aspects of the story. So they're like, yeah, look, I definitely say there's a lot of luck involved, a lot of hard work involved, and a lot of, you know, a lot of great journalists in the Sunday Times who backed me up and helped me, like, like Paul Rowan, who's been on the Irish soccer scene since, you know, for decades now. And, you know, I, I've been watching how he's been treated. And I thought it was appalling that, you know, I, I was a very good writer, but. You know, basically people in the FA are trying to force him out saying they didn't want him to cover, you know, um, football anymore because he was critical of the FAI's finances or was asking yeah. awkward questions. So when I see that kind of thing, it means, oh, look, I'm going to dig deeper, you know, and that's that's the kind of journalism I want to get involved in. So thankfully I have a, a boss who let me go. And like for the last six weeks, eight weeks, I've almost been doing John Delaney FAI stuff exclusively, which is the kind of first time I've been allowed that. But the response has just been amazing, just in terms of, you know, people clicking on our stories and are buying the newspaper, so it's been re very rewarding. Mm. Yeah. I hope you got pay rise for it. Not yet. No, I'll have to. Uh, <laughs> well, make sure the boss is watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send him. I'll send him this bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's kind of if in terms of myself. Um, I mean, I, I feel like now myself personally, I'm a lot more educated in, in what was actually going on. Um, we had a lot of people messaging, you know, saying, "Why aren't you speaking about it?" A, I wanted to let the football do the football bit. And B, then you know, get the facts out there or whatever. It's kind of gone quiet at the moment as well. Mm. Even I was just like, like we're talking about luck or you know, it was luck or fate. Uh, but like, even though I was thinking about the tennis ball protest the night of the Georgia game, you know, the fact that that happened at that time, and was, I, I, I'd love to know how it was organised. And the fact that we scored, I was like, this is this is you know, <laughs> you know, if it if it if it had happened a week to see to the goal or lost, you know. Yeah. It's like, this is like you know, there's a lot of things conspiring. Yeah, it's like here. the stars yeah. aligned. I know, yeah. It's sorry, bizarre. It's, it's just it's no, no. A funny thing that to happen. We actually know. captured that on video, which you can see on our Instagram, <laughs> the, the tennis balls and the goal. But uh, I just want to say a huge thanks to yourself, Mark, for coming in and, and just explaining the story uh, and educating the people. And uh, if you want to give the Sunday Times a plug, feel free. No, look, um, thanks for everyone that's subscri subscribed. It's. Uh, it's it's timesonline.ie I think is the uh, the website you can you can find the Irish edition if you do a Google search and it's uh, free for the first month and a fiver after that and thanks to everyone who's who's supporting our journalism. So there you have it, guys. Um, you've all got in touch with me, me and the lads, and you know you've asked us to kind of cover and you know get the facts out there. So we just thought we would educate yourselves as well as ourselves. Uh, again, huge thanks to Mark, um, and if you haven't already. Make sure to subscribe to him as you see he's doing uh, very good journalism and uh, you know now the, the future of Irish soccer is in better health I suppose you could say. Um, if you like this video drop a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well if you haven't already. So thanks for watching and we'll speak to you soon.